let's go over the process for calculating the gross load for the Manitowoc lattice boom crawler. Most of the problems you have on your specialty exam will be net capacity, but you may have one or two gross load problems. So need to be familiar with the steps involved and the procedure involved. In addition to this overview, there are several illustrations of actual problems that are worked through step by step. And this is just more of an overview, but I encourage you to go ahead and take a look at those, the examples that are available on the YouTube channel also. First step in any load chart problem is identifying what the problem is asking for. Is it a net capacity problem? Is it a gross load problem? Some problems they ask for the maximum radius, which to identify the maximum radius, you first have to calculate the gross load. Uh, you could also have a problem where they ask you what the minimum boom angle is. That would also require first calculating the gross load. You also may see problems on your special specialty exam that ask for information taken directly from the load charts. Uh, no calculations involved involved. All you have to do is be able to find the information information in the load chart and answer the question based upon that information. But let's talk more about gross load. We're going to focus on gross load here. The purpose of a gross load problem is to find the weight of the load so we can make sure we have the correct crane and crane setup to safely lift the load. And the, the gross load, the weight of the load, is not just the weight of the object itself, as, as we'll talk about as we, you know, as we move on here. Yeah. Gross load is the weight of the object you're trying to lift plus the weight of deductions. And here's the formula. Gross load equals the object weight plus deductions. And I like to abbreviate to save time. Uh, GL equals OW plus deductions. The object weight is the weight of the object you're trying to lift, uh, whether it be a bridge beam, a pressure vessel, air conditioning unit, that's the object weight. Deductions are the lifting accessories, implements that take away from the crane's capacity and add to the, the, the weight of the load. And this includes anything below the boom and jib tip shiv, basically anything below the boom and jib tip will add to the weight of the load. Also, if the jib is not being used to make the lift, it is also uh, a deduction. It also adds to the weight of the load. Now, let's go back to this point. One more thing. This is a common mistake. Uh, if you're making the lift from the jib, you do not have to deduct the jib. And I'll talk about that again as we, as we go through this process, because that's, that's a fairly common mistake, lifting from the jib and also deducting the jib. If the jib is being used, do not deduct the jib. Only deduct the jib if it's not being used to make the lift. Uh, this point here, it's more of a point on terminology. Uh, a lot of crane experts, when they're talking about gross load, Instead of deductions, they like to talk about add-ons or additions. And that's really a better term. Add-ons or additions is really a better term than deductions when you're talking about gross load. But to keep everything simple and consistent, if it's hanging below the boom tip or the jib tip, the weight of that object will be called a deduction. And it's almost uh, contradictory to talk about adding deductions. You add add-ons. But again, just to keep everything simple and consistent, we'll talk about deductions. Whether it's a net capacity problem or a gross load problem, I'll use the term deductions. Uh, let's talk about step two. Step one was identifying what the problem is asking for. Step two is simply writing the formula at the top of the work area on your scrap paper. For the exam, you will be giving, given two sheets of paper, which gives you four sides to write on to work out your calculations. Write your formula, and the formula for gross load, 
Gross load equals object weight plus deduction, the abbreviated form, which saves some time. GL equals OW plus DED. Step three is drawing out the crane's configuration. And you'll want to make your diagram large enough so that it's not crowded. Crowding can lead to mistakes. The, the goal here is to be organized and clear, which will make it easier to come up with the correct answer. You'll draw in the boom with a diagonal line and you'll label it with the, uh, with the boom length, radius horizontal line labeled with its, with its distance, radius distance. If you're given a boom angle, go ahead and write that in there. Uh, most of the time you're not going to be given both the boom angle and a radius, but if you are, go ahead and write them both down. If you have an upper boom point, go ahead and draw it in. Now keep in mind there is no deduction for an upper boom point, but go ahead and draw it in. You may be making the pick off of the upper boom point. If you're using a jib, draw it in. And I don't have it labeled here with the uh, with the length of the jib, but if it's a 30 foot jib, it's a good idea to write 30 foot jib erected or 40 foot jib erected. And those will be the two options with the Manitowoc uh, crawler, either a 30 foot or a 40 foot jib. The, there aren't any charts for any other jibs except for the 30 or 40 foot. But label that, uh, which I didn't hear, but, but it's a good idea to go ahead and label that, that jib. Also, if you're making the pick off the jib, it's a good idea to write in the jib offset. And that's, that's part of the configuration and that will affect uh, the numbers that you come up with for gross load. Wire rope and block hanging off the main boom. And if you've got multiple parts rope, you don't have to draw in every individual part of rope. If you have six parts, use a 6x to indicate that you have six parts of line. Wire rope and ball hanging off of the off of the jib that has to be accounted for also go ahead and if if that's part of your configuration draw it in there and don't forget rigging it's a uh, common mistake is to forget the rigging okay once you have your diagram all drawn out the next step step four is to write in your deduction weights now, one thing about the deduction weights for your block 4815, and again, this is just an example here, numbers to illustrate what we're doing. The weights for most of the lifting accessories will be provided to you in the data table that goes with the problem. You'll be given the weight of the block, the weight of the rigging. Uh, you'll be given the weight of the ball. The only thing that you'll have to look up is the weight of the jib and there's a table that I'll show you on the next slide uh, so you'll know what it looks like but there's a table that shows the deduction weights for the different jibs but go ahead and write in all your deduction weights ball 860 jib erected 2700 again which you have to look that up and a reminder on the jib don't deduct the jib if lift is being made off the jib only deduct the jib if it's not in use. If it's erected and not in use, then it has to be deducted. And for this example, we're assuming that the jib is erected and not in use and that we're picking off of the main boom. Rigging, 210 pounds, that will be given to you in the data, in the data table. Wire rope, for the Manitowoc, all wire rope has to be deducted. And we'll talk more about that, and I'll, I'll give you an example of the process for calculating the wire rope deduction toward the end of this presentation. But that has to be deducted, wire rope off the main boom, and also wire rope off the jib. Now the upper boom point is not a deduction. If the upper boom point is installed, it is not a, de a deduction. And here's the table that you'll see in your load chart notes that gives the deduction weights for the different jibs. And the only, the only jibs that you'll need to worry about is the 30 foot and the 40 foot. 
because the charts that we use for the exam, they do not have, there's no charts for anything beyond a 40 foot jib. And the more you do these problems, the more practice you get, you'll remember that the 30 foot weighs 2,700, the 40 foot weighs 3,500. But it's, even if you get to the point where you remember it, it's still probably a good idea to go back and double check when you're in the exam and actually doing the problem because you don't want to get cocky, you don't want to make a mistake. Again, all other deductions will be in the problem in the data table or part of the question. The wire rope weight is two pounds per foot. That is in the low chart notes. We'll talk more about that when we talk about calculating wire rope deductions. Step five, write in the object weight. You will be given the object weight, the weight of the air compressor or the weight of the bridge girder, whatever it is that you're wanting to, to lift, you'll be given that weight either in the data table or in the question. And once you have that, we can go ahead and plug it in. And this is what your formula should look like after you plug in that weight. GL equals 18,500 plus DED. Step six, add up your deductions. And you will have a calculator for you to use. If you're taking the pencil and paper test, you'll have a uh, inexpensive basic calculator to use. If you're taking the computer-based exam, the calculator will be part of the software. And I, I really think, for me at least, the computer-based exam and the way that calculator is set up is a little bit easier. And I, I prefer the computer-based exams all the way around, but that may just be a personal preference for me. But I think there, for me there are advantages of doing the computer-based exam. We want to add up our deductions, add up everything inside the yellow box. We do that, we come up with a total deduction weight of 9,893 pounds. And it's a good idea to double check your math. It's real easy to, to hit the wrong button on your calculator or add instead of subtract or subtract instead of add. So try to give yourself time so that you can go in and uh, double check your calculations. It's also a good idea to double check your deductions that you write down. Make sure that you haven't missed a deduction. Once we have uh, our deductions added up, we want to go ahead and plug that into our formula. Our formula looks like this. Gross load equals 18,500 plus 9,893 for, for the deductions. Step seven is add the object weight and total deductions. And we're finally at that point where we have our gross load number, 28,393. Uh, this is the weight of your load when deductions are added, 28,393. And again, it's always a good idea to double check your math. Step eight is determining if your crane has enough capacity to handle the load. Now this is step eight in the field. This is why we use gross load in the field. We calculate the total weight on the crane, and then we determine, well, does this crane have enough capacity or do we need to, to reconfigure the crane in some way or do we need to in a worst case scenario, we have to bring in a different crane because the crane we have on site is not, not going to be able to do the job. But on the exam, they may just be asking for this number, this gross load number. If they are, you're done. Just pick that answer as, as the correct answer and you're good to go. But also on the exam, they may ask you for the maximum radius with the load. Uh, you know, what is your maximum radius that you can go out to uh, with the crane as it's configured and with a gross load of 28,393? They may also want to know what is the minimum boom angle? How low can you go with your boom with this load and the way it's configured? Uh, you may have to uh, 
change your boom length. That may be part of reconfiguring your load so that you can make the pick for this particular load. A question may ask you what is the maximum boom length that you can go to with this particular gross load. Okay, those are the eight steps. Let's go ahead and review them. Step one, what is the problem asking for? Step two, write out the formula on your worksheet. Step three, draw out your configuration. Number four, uh, look up deduction weights and write those in on your diagram. Now, wire rope deduction has to be calculated, and we're getting into that the next slide. We'll talk specifically about how we calculate a wire rope deduction. Step five, plug the object weight into your formula. Step six, total up your deductions. And step 6B, plug your deduction total into the formula. Step seven, add the object weight and your total deductions, and this is going to give you your gross load. Step eight, determine if your crane can safely handle this load and what is the maximum radius, minimum boom angle. Now let's, let's talk more specifically about calculating the wire rope deduction for the Mani Manitowoc lattice boom crawler. With the Manitowoc crane for the CCO exam, we're going to deduct all the wire rope. And that's what our low chart notes tell us to do, deduct all wire rope. If we have six parts of wire rope off the main boom and we're that main boom is used to make the, make the lift, we're going to deduct all six parts of that wire rope from tip to ground. If we also have a jib erected and there's 10 foot hanging off the jib, we're going to deduct the weight of that 10 feet of rope hanging off the jib. We're going to de de deduct all wire rope. And it's this, this process is the same whether it's a net capacity problem or a gross load problem. And we're going to use the boom length and the radius to find our boom point elevation. Column three, or the third column from the left, is the column for boom point elevation in feet. Uh, boom point elevation is the heading they use for this column, but it's the tip to ground distance, or it's the tip height, is what we're talking about. Uh, if we have 190 foot of boom, and 105 foot radius. Our tip to ground distance is 169.6 feet. But we need to round up in this particular example. If your decimal is 0.5 or above, you round up your, your tip to ground distance. If the decimal part of that number is 0.4 or below, you round down. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. I'll give you some more, more examples of that. Uh, and one thing about the rounding. How do we know we, that we have to round? On your question, on the exam question, it will say use the tip to ground method with rounding to the nearest whole number. It will specifically direct you to round to the, to the nearest whole number. And if you don't round or you round incorrectly, you're going to end up with, uh, with an incorrect answer. For a, let's, let's assume that we're working with a crane that has four parts line off the main boom. Uh, the wire rope deduction weight is calculated using this formula. The weight equals parts of line times the tip to ground distance times the weight per foot. And we know from the load chart notes that the Manitowoc wire rope is two pounds per foot. So we have everything we need. We, we have four parts line. We have our tip to ground distance, which we round up to 170 feet. And we have two pounds per, per foot. We multiply all that out. We end up with a wire rope deduction of 1,360 pounds. And that's it. It's, it's a lot simpler calculating the wire rope deduction for a Manitowoc than it is a lot of other cranes, a lot of other manufacturers. You don't have to use a range diagram. You don't have to worry about 
uh, only deducting excess wire rope. It just you deduct all the wire rope. There's no questions about well how many parts do I need? How many parts are extra? It's just straightforward and simple. Uh, the numbers are given to you in the table, in the chart. But let's talk a little bit more about rounding. When rounding Manitowoc boom point elevations, round up if a decimal is 0.5 or higher, round down if it's 0.4 or lower. For example, if the table over here says 155.5, you would round up to 156. If it said 155.4, you would round down to 155. Okay. Last thing I want to do is just talk about, just talk briefly about some common mistakes on load chart problems. Misreading a number. If we misread a number uh, from the chart, that's going to result in an incorrect. Uh, answer when we get to the end. So pay attention and and stay focused and make sure you're using the right numbers from the chart or whatever wherever you're getting the numbers from. Don't misread the numbers. Could be a math error, addition or subtraction or multiplication. Be careful and don't miss a deduction. You want to double check your math but you also want to double check your deductions and make sure you've accounted for all the the different lifting accessories that you have to deduct. Don't deduct something that shouldn't be deducted. That's a common mistake is deducting something that shouldn't be deducted. The best example of this if you're lifting off the jib and you deduct the jib. Remember, only deduct the jib if the jib is erected and not in use. Writing down the wrong weight for a deduction. The maybe the block deduction weight is 4815, but you accidentally write down 4810. You're going to be off by five pounds if, if that happens. So it all it's all about being accurate and being focused. And that's where the practice comes in. The more you practice, the better off you're going to be. Make sure you're using the correct chart. Again, for gross load, the chart is not as important as it is for net capacity, but you know, make sure that you're on the right chart if the, if the chart is necessary for anything. Also, don't forget about line capacity and line pull. Again, not so much important on gross load problems, more so on net capacity problems. Be careful calculating your wire rope deduction. And remember, with the Manitowoc, you deduct all wire rope. And finally, misreading the chart. And the best example of misreading the chart, or you could say it's being in the wrong column on the chart, but the best example with the Manitowoc is if you've got crawlers retracted, but you're looking at the numbers for crawlers extended. So, and, and like I've said, it really goes back to, to being focused, being accurate, but at the same time being fast enough that you are able to do all of your problems within the, the one hour that you're going to have for your specialty exam. Uh, and if it's a recertification exam, you've only got 30 minutes. But if it's a recertification exam, you'll have 30 minutes to do 10 questions. And most of those 10 questions for the recertification are going to be load chart problem type questions. Well, that pretty much covers the, the basic steps involved in calculating the gross load. Practice, practice, practice. Don't just redo the same problems over and over again. Hopefully you have access to a good set of practice problems. You know, 20, 25, 30, maybe even 40 that you can work through in a rotation. Again, it, and that's a lot better than doing the same problems over and over again. If you do the same problems over and over again, you're going to get really good at those, but you may be completely lost when you see something completely different on the, on the actual examination. 
Good luck in your preparation and good luck when you go in to take the exam.